Well, <clears throat> hello and welcome to the first in a series of um, eight webinars, which are for new starts to agriculture and new entrants. Um, I'm the chair tonight, I'm Cara Campbell. I'm a SAC consultant in SAC Consulting in Campbelltown. And tonight we have Oliver Shearman and Nick North, who are auctioneers over at Caledonian Marks in Stirling. So tonight's webinar will run for an hour. Um, Ollie and Nick are going to speak first and then we'll have questions at the end. Just some of the things that Ollie and Nick are going to cover are um, what breeds of cattle and sheep that buyers are looking for when they're to buy, um, some live weights at market and finish stock and carcass confirmation. Um, so the webinar is about supplying the buyers and focusing on what new entrants and new people to agriculture are trying to breed for buyers coming out of the west coast of Scotland. Okay. So um, now what I'll do is I'll hand over to Ollie and Nick to do their presentation. Okay. Over to you, Ollie and Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. So I'm Oliver Shearman from Caledonian Marks in Stirling. And I'm Nick uh, North, and I'm a trainee auctioneer at the Cali Market. So I'm uh, I'm a livestock auctioneer. I've, I've been at the Cali for six years now, and uh, we moved up from Yorkshire originally to join up here at the Cali, and uh, never looked back since. You know, love uh, love selling livestock, so can't can't grumble. And no two days are the same, that's for sure. And then well, Nick's been. Yeah, so uh, I got a keen interest in agriculture growing up uh, and I went through to college in Edinburgh to SRUC, became an Edinburgh Agric and I was through the, there for three years, uh, just as summer jobs of in, in between college and just at the end of the summer, uh, I saw that, that Caledonia Marks were, were looking for a training auctioneer. It's, Something I've always thought about, it's, uh, there's just a, a buzz about the market that you don't really get anywhere else, I don't think, especially in this industry. Uh, it's a very sort of sociable place, there's a good buzz about it. I don't think any other industry is the same as uh, a livestock market anyway, that's for no, sure. No, so there's, yeah, there's, I think it's a very sort of unique way of selling something and it's something that gripped me and, uh, yeah, so I, I ended up joining the, the market here in October and sadly I've ended up working with Oliver ever since. Uh, you can see he looks very upset about that. He, he likes to think that he's my mentor. <laughs> <laughs> he's most certainly not. <laughs> uh, but no, we, 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 it's, a, it's a good job. It's very exciting. As Ollie says, there's, a, there's no day the same. Every day is completely different. Uh, so, yeah, that's what we, we enjoy the most about it. So, uh, tonight we're going to be talking about what the buyers are looking for in the west coast of Scotland. So just on this, this slide here, that's just uh, talking you through each slide, what we're going to talk about. So we've got the, the obviously the selling cattle and sheep, the different breeds, the, the live wheat, so stock at sales, finished stock, what the likes, uh, the wholesale of the butcher, the winter at the end produce, the carcass confirmation, and then obviously the growth rate, which is obviously like on the West Coast, the majority of the stock goes for stores. So obviously the finishes obviously wanting growth within the, within the beef store. Yeah. So as a lot of answering the question of what buyers are looking for in the west coast of Scotland, we'll talk about other things as well to, to so you understand, you know, I know in the west coast of Scotland, you know, most folk probably sell their, their sheep and cattle as stores, but it's important to understand what the finished product is so then you know your part within that st stage of the life. So we're going to talk about the bigger picture as well, just of what exactly the buyers are looking for. So we'll get on with it then. So we'll start with the, the, uh, the cattle and sheep. So ages, ages is a very big thing when it comes to selling stock. Obviously for the likes of store cattle in particular, like, I mean, you, you want to sell them when they've still got age on the side. So for the finished produce, 30 months, which two and a half years is the cutoff point for prime stock before it becomes an old, an OTM, which is over 30 months. But uh, so obviously if you're selling stores, you're not wanting to be selling them at really 28, nine, 
months old because you're not giving the next chap the purchase so long to finish to finish those beasts. But I mean, it's different if you sell them at that at big weights where they're not needing long to be pushed. But, um, you know, up on the west coast, normally yearlings, 14, 15 months that they get sold at, you know, at that 300, 350 kilo mark. So you, you've got to just look at the bigger picture when it comes to selling. So you've got to consider that the beast that, that you probably in, in, on the west coast, especially uh, you bred and, and brought onto the farm, you know, you're just the first stage. It could uh, go on to at least another two or three holdings by the end of 30 months. So you've got to be careful not to hold on it for too long, sell it, sell it at a good age where age is on the side, because when it comes to a store cattle sale and it comes up in the ring, the, the age is the first thing that the, the buyers will look at and they'll be thinking, how long have I got to take that to, to a finished product? So, I mean, I, I obviously what Nick's just touched on there, but uh, like if you were selling a beast at 28 months at 300 kilos, someone's going to be a lot more what's the word, not keen on, hesitant, yeah. uh, hesitant on, on bidding on it, as opposed to if it was 300 kilos at 12 months, because, I mean, it's still got age on its side. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, so then, touching on the presentation of the cattle, it's uh, something that's very open to debate within the industry. I'd, I'd say I think a lot of folk take a, a very different sort of touch on it. Um, it's in different situations, it's, it's, it's important. Uh, for example, if you're quite a common thing, if you're especially on the West Coast, you're, you're not going to maybe carry your, your store capital through the winter. So you probably sell suckled calves at, at a back end sale. With the suckled, uh, suckled calf sales, its uh, presentation is quite a big thing. You know, it's worth putting a bit of effort into it. But there's also a limit of not taking it over the top. I mean, we've had, you know, customers before with with hairier cattle and then just going clipping the whole body and, and in fact it makes the cattle look worse where buyers appreciate uh, the hairiness of a cattle and it makes them understand that you know these are sort of things that could go on and out winter or the sort of hardier cattle and you know the, the job of them so it, it's a fine line uh, it's it's well worth doing because you know it shows the buyer that you're you know you're interested and you're proud of what you're selling but you don't want to take it too far until you're actually just disguising the product you're selling. You, you want to show what it really is. But I mean, even, even like a month before you decide to sell either the, the cattle or the sheep, you know what I mean? Just to give them a wee bite of feed, you know I mean? Not much, but just, just a wee bit, just to keep them working away, get them looking in, in a sale condition as such, rather than just, just like pulling them straight off the hill and, exactly. and whacking them in, you know? Cause I mean, at the end of the day, a buyer is going to look at how the beast looks in the ring for what they're going to pay for it, essentially. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if you decide just to give it a wee bite to eat for a month or so, just to get a wee shine on it, get a wee bit of condition, you know, focal, an extra four or five bids, and that's the fee paid for. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, and then going on to the batches of stock, so when, when you're selling, uh, it's, it's harder for some people to achieve, but... Uh, definitely from our point of view as a market, you want to sell the big, biggest lots as possible. So, you know, you've got that couple of minutes when you're coming into the ring and nothing looks better in the ring than a big pen, whether it's store lamb, store cattle, uh, a nice big pen full. It just makes them look uh, far more appealing to the buyer. It's, uh, it's the best way to present it. There's, there's nothing worse when selling in, in singles. You know, it's where when buyers start to pick up on wee problems and they won't go as far as they would for a, a, a big pen, whether it's cattle or sheep. But I mean, obviously not everybody's got, say, say someone has 10 cattle and you might only manage to get two or three of them as a lot and the rest are singles. I mean, it's, everybody's in a yeah. scenario. It's not easy trying to, get a batch, it's exactly, trying to get a batch yeah. the same, but... You can't say everything, but it's, yeah. it's, it's something to work towards. But I mean, even in, even in like twos, threes, yeah. fours, you know I mean? That, these buyers, they've, they've, time isn't always on their side, so they'd rather get through a sale quicker and, and buy larger numbers to get orders filled, fill a worry for themselves. You know, I mean, but if it's just one after this one, yeah. I mean, it, it fair drags fair drags out the day. So it does, but, uh, and as Nick says, I mean, they start to spot issues with singular ones as opposed to twos and threes, you know. But, uh, and then, look, Penny. <laughs> That's always a big. That's always a big one, especially for the the 
the buyers who buy on other people's behalf. So, you know, I mean, if they know that you're going to give them a wee bit of luck, I'm not saying you always have to, but I mean, obviously it can depend on the trade that you've got for the stock as well, but it definitely encourages folk to, to bid on your, your stock. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's something we thought we just worth mentioning because it's, yeah. so especially it's a sort of tradition that's likely been lost uh, with the sort of a, a COVID pandemic that is, we're seeing it less and less and less. And it's uh, it's just, to be honest, it's just a nice touch um, and it does make a difference to the buyers from our point of view, definitely. But, yeah, no, obviously, like, look Penny down at home in Yorkshire, that's that's a big thing. When I first moved up here, it never really was a push. Well, not push, that's the wrong word, but, I mean, down at home, like, if you went to the market, you'd see someone stood in the ring waving a fiver, you know what <laughs> I mean? And then up here, it, nobody, nobody really mentions anything. Nothing, nothing but, beats a good tight West Coast farmer. <laughs> Tight farm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, the next point there is managing expectations. Uh, a, a report is a it can be a very deceiving thing at times. Uh, a report is the whole point is you're highlighting the best of the best. Uh, and, or the best of that day. Yeah, the best of that on that day, and it's and it's focusing on that. And some people will read that this piece talked at that, therefore my beef should be worse that or, or same if it was lambs or that so it's important to understand where your stock are compared to others and uh, is it it's just don't get too carried away of getting uh, sort of deep into a report as such but i mean even even like averages so say like the prime lambs for example i mean at the end of the day it's all down to what sort of show is held at the market i mean there's some days where you could have 90 percent could be bell texas you know i mean tremendous at the best of the best carcasses but then you get other days where it could be 90 percent black is which obviously black is a worth less than than a beltex you know i mean with maybe one day i mean especially with covid I and mean, everything seems to be going through the roof we might see black is the same price as beltexes which would be absolutely tremendous especially <laughs> for the west coast is looking here but uh, i don't i don't quite think it'll get there but oh, it'd be nice <laughs> But uh, so I that's that's when folk read a report, they always need to take into consideration that's what's on offer that day. Because I mean, the, the amount of farms you go into, and or oh, you average this, surely mine's worth that. And but it's, it's yeah. difficult to explain sometimes. But uh, and then I mean, selling through a ring that's obviously <laughs> our industry, that's a huge we're gonna sell that, uh, I, We're going to say that <laughs> no matter what, but. I mean, it's a huge thing. I mean, having the eyes of the buyers around the thing, as opposed to like when folks sell on farms, I mean, it's night and day. Because I mean, like on a, on a busy day here, you could have 65, 70, well, before COVID, obviously, but you could have 65, 70 buyers stood around the ring. And I mean, even if each one of them is going to buy 10 cattle, I mean, that's that's heck of a beast to sell. Uh, it's, it's also, the sound of the ring is, is you've worked all year round to produce a product and especially on the west coast it might only be the one or two days you're you're, you're selling it and it's a good chance to, to show off you know the hard work you've done you know you, you, you should be proud when, when your stock go into the ring and you've got you know 40 50 eyes looking at your stock uh, and, and bidding for them you know they're there to want them and that's it's a moment to be proud and show uh, selling off a farm is You've only got one set of eyes looking to buy it, so it's something we always we always push hard is, is for the ring. So I mean, even even going like back to that I mean, one set of eyes, I mean, it's all been well, even if it's the same person buying them through the ring each year on year. Because I mean, I mean, there's obviously certain buyers who who like to buy certain certain people's cattle because they they buy them over years. They know how they do. They know what they're going to be like. But I mean, even inviting them to the farm to to offer for them. You always forget about the guy who put them to that price in the ring. I mean, that year in particular, like if you did this for the following year, that guy that put in there last year, he might be more keen for them this year. But you just don't think, you always think about the person who's who's actually bought them the following years. But no, it's definitely definitely a big Sorry, part. Yeah. Well, to the next page, I think, please. On, on to breeds. Yeah, so with the breeds. Uh, especially when it comes to the West Coast is, although it's really important to think about the product and where it's going to end up, you've got, you've got to think about what suits your, your, your system first, you know, 
whether you're, you're hill farming and you need to sort of hardy cattle. Um, so you've got to think about your farming system first and, and how you're going to produce a product. Uh, and that should be your sort of, uh, sort of first thought when it comes to choosing breeds. Uh, and then from that point, you can then think about maybe I can cross it with something, you know, just get something a bit, a bit of a better carcass, a bit of a better fleshier product that's then going to go for, for the sale. So, yeah, it's it's managing it right, finding a right balance between what suits your farming system and what's the best product at the end of the line. So it's just about finding that. Finding that balance. Finding that balance, definitely. But once you've found it, I mean, you know, you know how to do. I mean, if like for the hill ground, I mean, with the black is cross the cross the, uh, the blue face to the black is. You've got your yellow lamb, your mule yellow lambs. You know, I mean, you put a textile over them, then you. Um, and by means, Ollie and I are no means qualified to give advice on well, farming on, systems. On you know? cattle <laughs> and farming systems. Our job is to sell them when we get here, so uh, we can't start to start giving advice on how, how to breed your cattle. We can, we can obviously tell you, we'll give you an idea of what folk are looking for yeah, and what exactly we think, what for, but I mean, we can say easier than what you guys can do it. Exactly. Uh, I mean, exactly. it's the same with anything, isn't it? And I think yeah. we touched on like spring sales here. So in spring sales, uh, we, we call it grass cattle. So as buyers are looking for, for cattle that they can buy to put out straight to the grass that will go on and, uh, and thrive. But this is a big thing, especially for sort of West Coast kind of cattle, the hardier breeds, sort of hairier cattle. Uh, nothing really excites the buyers more than that, and sort of native bred sort of uh, hairier cattle coming in springtime. Out winter. Out winter, yes. yeah. Grass is growing, and they know they'll give them a dose, put them out to the grass out of home, and, and they'll grow and thrive. So uh, that's sort of what we think about the springtime. Uh, but I no, just when, when when the buyers get grass fever, you know, mm. I mean the grass it was slow this year. It was slow, but obviously the grass was slow. So, but I mean when when it got going, I mean yeah, all stock all stock took a jump. I mean especially even the ewes and lambs. The ewes and lambs have been a tremendous trade this season so yeah. far. You know, I mean especially when the grass has just kept on motoring as well. You know, I was I was down at a farm the other day and I got out to uh, out the car and stood in the field looking at some coos and calves. And the grass was up to my knees. And I said, what, what are you doing here? How, how do you let the grass get away so much? Oh, well, I forgot about this field. So I thought I'd throw something on it. I said, you need more than, I think you had 30, 30 or 35 cows and calves on it. And I said, throw some sheep on, get the, get the grass going. Oh, you know what, Ollie? I, I think I'll do that. So he came and bought some yows and lambs and threw that, threw that on. You know, but I mean, even just him buying a wee pickle just to get on top of the grass. It makes, it makes a big difference. It makes a big yeah. difference. You know, folk who are who are tight tight on grass in sort of the May time, it's slow and coming. So they might have sold in lamb yews or you know killed more ewes than they were planning on. Uh, they then it comes around and the grass rockets on, and you know they come back looking looking for yews and lambs at foot. So yeah, the grass definitely has a, a big part of it. Um, but when we come to the autumn time, it's 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 slightly like different. Aye, uh, especially through through the story yeah. up the west coast. I mean, I mean the the, the cattle up the west coast I means buyers throughout uh, are renowned for knowing how how they can go on and do, especially in the autumn time. I mean, God forbid me for saying it, but when we had open, I mean, the the autumn sales were were always tremendous yeah. you know i mean it was the same same buyers and then they would tell their friends and then new buyers would arrive and oh i mean they'd come by the car loads which was which was always a good thing but not that we can all i mean come by the car yeah. loads now right enough you know needing a bloody minibus <laughs> the uh the, the autumn sales as well especially from a cattle point of view it's probably quite a, a big thing a big thing for farmers in, in the west coast especially with the the prices of a straw uh, and feed, the, the cost of taking cattle through the, the winter uh, is it's, it's extreme cost. So a lot of folk will turn to the sort of suckled calf sales at, at, at the back end. Uh, and there's de definitely a big buyer buzz about buying, you know, these suckled calves out, out the West Coast uh, at the back end sales because they, they, know, they know what they can they go and do and they, they know what they're getting. In that in that sense, the West Coast is very lucky for the the reputation it has uh, for, for the these back end sort of suckled cow sales. I mean, even even the sheep as well, the lambs. I mean, there's there's boys from the north of England that would come up 
and by by the lambs because I mean just give them a dose and keep them pushing, you know, put them to yeah. They you know um, if 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 they can survive the West, they can survive anywhere. And it's a sort of thing is if they're born in the West and with the the wind, the rain, the hard grind, they, they know these buyers know that no, no matter if it's uh, cheaper cattle, they'll go on and thrive, and that's why the the West Coast has just got the reputation that it does, you know. But uh, going on to like the, the need to bread cattle now and the premiums, we're going back to like what suits your farming system here, but by no means, Nick and I have no... <laughs> we're, we're, already, we're, already, we're giving ideas here, we're giving ideas, that's all, that's all. But I mean, obviously the, the Angus and the Shorthorns, they've been, they've been tremendous for the last few years, you know, I mean, with the premiums. They've been, they have been up and down, but I mean, it's the same, the same with anything. I mean, some weeks for the Anguses, they can be 15, 20 p above the Continentals, but on a base price, obviously. At that point there, it's, it's, it's well worth having a, a registered sire when it, when it comes to these uh, Anguses and Shorthorns. It's a, it's a good one that buyers, buyers are definitely looking for is a uh, you know, registered sire, especially the Anguses at the moment. Uh, the Angus premium is a, it's a strong premium. It's uh, is one well worth taking advantage of, so it, it does. Especially if you're liking the Angus anyway. I mean, yeah. you may as well you may as well make sure that the bulls are registered you know, sire, yeah. just just for exactly because it, 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 you know some people might argue it doesn't make a difference, but I think it does at this end. That the, the buyers are definitely looking for these registered sires. You know, if they don't have them, sometimes on the phone to us, chasing us to find out. You know, has it got registered sires? Has it got registered sire? So it. It makes a difference. It's well worth taking the effort to, to, to do so. Yeah, definitely. And then on to the, the weight gains on stock now. I mean, it's, weight gains is always a big thing, and a lot of folk will know that from buying certain people's stock. But, I mean, especially to, like, to new entrants, new starts to agriculture, I mean, you, you've, you've got the door open there. I mean, when you're, when you're, when you're a new start and it's your first sale, that's your time to get to get into the book of the buyers. So they, I mean, it's, it's remarkable the memory they have. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. They, don't, <laughs> so they, don't, they don't forget a name. They don't forget a name and they'll, they'll, they'll remember if you're stopped as well with them. And that makes that makes a huge difference. Absolutely. So it does. The, the, the whole weight gain thing actually sort of comes back to that age we're talking about of selling. It's, it's timing you're right. And I mean, they are a product and it's, it's about not keeping the product for, for too long. Um, or, or too short, it's finding that sweet spot time to sell where they're, they're maybe not as doing, they're not, they're, maybe, they're not as putting a weight gain on as much as they were before, they're maybe starting to slow down with, with your grind, your system. They've done as much with the, yeah. on the West Coast as what they can you do. Know, into. Folk, folk can be hellish to hang on to them for too long because they want, you know, they think, oh, well, it's going to be, the more I keep it, the more it's going to be worth, but it's actually not. It's, you've got to find the right time to sell for the, for the age and the weight. So um, you've got to really sort of think about that. What, what's going to be the sweet spot there, whether it's actually for cattle. So it's something yeah. well worth thinking about. Yeah. No, defi definitely. But, uh, yeah, now to the, the live weights and sales. I'm not talking about the weights here a lot, but it's obviously a big factor on stock. So it is. But uh, what weight should you sell stock at? It's a very good question. I'll hand you over to Nick for this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a very open question on what weight you should sell stock at. Um, so when it's store sales, don't think about the weight of your cattle too much, is, is, is what I would say. Is uh, you, you think about it as what it looks as a product and what, what its future is. Um, but when we are when we are selling when it comes to the prime stock i mean you're the prime stock man only what weights are we looking for in prime sheep and prime cattle in especially like in the prime cattle as long as long as they have flesh but i really i, I wouldn't personally advise anything below like that force 480 kilo mark as long as it's flesh because i mean in the storing you can get beasts at 550 600 kilos that haven't got the flesh they aren't even fed but I mean, a lot you do see beasts that, that they, they start to go, they start to go fat before they grow up the way. So I mean, there's there's only really one road for them at that. But I mean, I mean, I was I was reminiscing of the chap this was that like yesterday yesterday morning actually who uh, he sold in the fat ring a couple of years ago and it was 27 months old limousine bullock a thousand kilos and at the time I was in the ring with him and I was on my on my tiptoes trying to see over it and I still. 
I still couldn't, but anyway, so I mean, there's, there's chaps, there, there are boys for every weight, but it's just trying to find, uh, so the, it's just trying to find them, like the lambs, what you? The, the lambs, and I wouldn't really sell it, prime lambs for those 30 kilos. Yeah, was it really yeah. nice? Try to get a 40 kilo mark. For, as long as I ran the, the 40 kilo mark, you know, but I'm, again, if they're 50 kilos, 60 kilos, there are, there are boys, there are buyers for, for them. So yeah. that's just another thing that I know a lot of folk on the West Coast might probably won't take them to, to the, the prime stage, but it's uh, you've got to think about where the product's going, and, you know, if it's going to be fat, what weight it's going to be, and then that comes back to again thinking of, of timing of your selling. So let's go back to the time of year there, it's the time of year you're selling on, who's it going to go on to, do you got to think who's going to take it, and, and how long is it going to take for them? Just to get it to the sort of 40, 40 kilo mark as, as such. So. And then going on to like the weight loss at the market, I mean, that's that's a big thing. We folk, a lot of folk mention that. But I mean, it's it's obviously travelling. I mean, especially up on the West Coast. I mean, you, it's not as if you're you're five minutes from the, the nearest mart, is it? You know what I mean? By the time it takes, yeah, anything, any excess. Well, quite often, and, like, just, just even the stress and the move from stock, and when, Maybe quite a lot of time on the West Coast, they, they come into our, our paddocks overnight uh, before the sale. And it's just, it's a big move. It's a, it's a big change of scene for them. So it's not like they're going to come off and put their heads down and graze away straight away. So there's always going to be a couple of kilos lost. So if you know, if you want them weighing 43 kilos, your lambs weighing 43 kilos at the market, you should probably count for, for two, a two kilo loss, we say, to just to be in the safe side, two or three kilo uh, loss. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, even like the stock, I mean, we have a fantastic layerage here, I mean, great silage. So, I mean, to be to be fair, I mean, most of the West, West Coast stock, cattle-wise, it does come in a couple of days before, which definitely does not do them any harm whatsoever because it gives them time to recover from the stress. Yeah. They have a wee bite to eat a silage. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's, it's definitely, it is good for them coming off the West Coast a couple of days before a sale because it just gives, it gives the stock the chance to look dead. The best, yeah. You know, absolutely. given the given the the glow back. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, it's a good it's a good thing getting them in here, yeah, or into any market a few days early because yeah, as Ollie says, they're settled in as well. You know, everyone knows how how their cat can be or so. And if after that long journey, you know, they can be perfectly quiet quiet at home. But it makes a difference once they're here. So it's quite good getting them in and, and getting them settled in yeah. as such. So it's well worth doing. And then, sorry, sorry going go. Go. There you go. <laughs> I was going on to the next one. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Right, so the, uh, the importance of weight between prime and store, I did briefly touch it when I was going on about, you know, a fat beast at 480 kilos. But, I mean, you have to, you have, you have to be sensible in a way, because, I mean, there, there, are, there are beasts that do go through the storing, that they would go through the fat, but, I mean, some of these, some of these buyers that buy the store cattle, I mean, they're, they're putting through, you know, I mean, thousands, thousands of fat cattle a year. So, I mean, it's six and a half a dozen, it really, is, if, it's yeah. a, if it's at that sort of weight. But, I mean, if it was if it was a 700 kilo beast, I would say, you know, um, without seeing it, I would say fat, you know, through the prime ring. But, I mean, if a lot, a lot of farmers, a lot, obviously, this is new stats, but a lot of old, I'm trying not to be bad here, the, Nick, the generation above Nick and I and Cara, you know, I mean, uh, they know they know themselves if it's if it's fat or store. I mean, every- that's it. And we're seeing the importance of weight cream prime. There is uh, your your weight matters a lot when it, and it comes to the finishing uh, and your sort of your pence per kilo there. But it's not too important to get caught up on how they're weighing uh, when it comes to a store sale. Yeah. You you obviously want them to weigh well, uh, but. It, don't focus too much on the weight and don't sell on the basis on how they're weigh- weighing. Sell as how they look as a product. You got to sell them at the right stage when they're, when they're looking right and they're looking at their best to go on to someone else and they're, they're ready to go somewhere else. If you're, if you're going on by weight, it, it's, uh, it's, it's not the best way to go. Um, so it's, it's something worth definitely thinking about is not, not to focus too much on, on, your, on your store weights. It's just actually focus on the products itself. Yeah, because um, so. I mean, a lot of folk with the store weights, they, although we sell store cattle pounds per head, they always look at the pence per kilo. Yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, 
it's the pounds per head that's going in the bank that's going to keep the business, that's, keep the farm, that's it. And the, farm going. And at a store sale, people look at that, that beast and say, it might only weigh, might be just a 200 kilo stark, but I know when I take that home and put it into grass, it's going to thrive and do and, and grow quick. So they'll, they'll bid higher. It, it might look a pence per kilo where you might get a sort of heavier beast, which do you think it's been pushed on hard? So it's not going to go and thrive. So it's, you know, that actually can work out less, even though it weighs more. So. Yeah, as you say, you don't focus on the weights at all. Well, I mean, we've we, 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 we discussed, we discussed time to finish yeah. stock earlier, yeah, Ron. Yeah, we'll move on to the, the finished finish stock. stock. So, I mean, there's a, there's a good food to the, the limousine, well, it was a Christmas show. I think it was two, uh, it'd be three years, no, two years ago, sorry, two years ago, two years ago there, and uh, I no, that was a limousine bullock that won that. But when it comes to finished stock, I know there's the, I know there won't be many folk out the west coast of Scotland that go into finished stock. It's, just, it's, important, it's, to it's, important, it's important to understand the next process of, yeah. the, of the people that are buying buying the stores. So, I mean, like, the likes are killing out percentages. Of, well, we, we briefly well, we touched on yeah. about what, what breeds to have on the farm, but obviously Nick and I aren't farmers. But uh, well, just put that lightly. Yeah. Well, Nick tries, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bash. So the kill out percentage, you obviously, when it comes to that, you're not going to get an Angus or a Shorthorn killing out the same as a limousine or a Charlie, for example. I mean, yeah, you just, for it's just, it's not, I can't say it's not possible because there are beasts that do it, but. It's it's up there with the limousines and the Charlies. Yeah, it is. And yeah. It, when it comes to kind of percentage, but it, it, it's a different thing again because although uh, your your Charlies and your limousines will, will kill out better, it comes back to these so these native bred premiums, you know. So it, it actually balances itself, but balances itself yeah, out yeah. because you get this premium for these these native bred calf hold. Because when when you go into a, a supermarket and uh, you, you know you buy an Aberdeen Angus steak. Why are you buying an Aberdeen Angus steak? You know, can you notice the difference between an Angus steak? Probably not between any other breed, but it's just got a, a great reputation, a great name, a great marketing thing about it. So there's there's a premium there to be had. So in the sense, it, it all sort of balances out in the way, but it's yeah, it's another thing we. Just but you've remember. you've always to remember that, like talking about that, an Angus nine times out of ten will take longer to finish than a limousine. Exactly. To to get it up to the weights anyway. Although you're getting the premium, it does balance itself out in the long term. But yeah, and then like feed types, that's that's obviously a big part when it comes to finished stock. I mean, it obviously depends. How they're not going to get finished on fresh air. You know, yeah. I wish they did. I, this, I put the weight on with the fresh air, but as it's shame these stone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Link, linking the, the the feed types sort of back to the stage where we're hoping you'll be at um, is is the feed types is. You're looking, you've got to think about what they're going to be feeding on once they bought it off you, maybe at a store sale. Uh, and it makes a difference for cattle, not not to be pushed on. And we don't, we don't like, we like cattle naturally done, but you know, if, if they've been creep fed, it, it's just enough to, to get the rumen working. So it's not a shock when they get onto later on in life and they're put on sort of a, a fancier TMRs and things that, uh, that can make a difference. So it's it is worth having your sort of cow sort of creep fed or just a wee bit of cake here and there just just so they're used to it um, just, to give them a wee, just to give them a wee a wee bite for yeah. it so they know what it is when we, you know, when the next when the purchaser exactly. buys it you know we are you know people buy store cattle uh, and they'll put them on buying out the west coast or such and they'll put them on a, a fancy feed ration and it can knock the cattle straight off their feet you know uh, because they've just they've just been outside grass on and, and it's a complete shock but yeah that comes back to this sort of naturally done we don't it's not we don't like pushed on stock especially coming from the west coast got a good reputation for being naturally done uh, and, and not pushed hard uh, and therefore they go on and, and thrive and that's why the, the west coast has got uh, such a strong reputation in that sense it's, it's, it's all about being naturally done so uh, yeah it's working for it I mean, like the wheat, the wheat gains need to be viable. We kind of talked about there in the feed type, oops. but I mean, like the buyers that they, they, they're obviously wanting cattle that go on and do. I know we keep saying that a lot, and it's not easy. It's not easy to do, but it it has to be viable for them to to make 
What's the saying? Everybody needs a bite of the apple. Yeah, that's right. Everybody needs a bite of the apple. And if, if the cattle aren't going to go on and do or the or the stock in general, I mean the sheep as well, they they'll just they'll just remember and they won't they won't be there next year to to help to help the trade, you know. So aye. Now we've talked about the different breeds and how they kill. On the carcass. Aye. Carcass combination. Ensure how stock is finished. Yeah, that's we've we've, we've done quite a lot of touch on this already, really. Uh, we've kind of skimmed around quite a bit of it, and then like I ensure how stock is finished. The fat grades, obviously, like uh, there's there's grading for for all lambs, cow, uh, prime cattle, everything. Everything gets graded when once it's killed for for like the butcher, or the wholesaler, to, so they know what what class it is as such. So they know whether like. Say like a wholesaler buys it who's finer butchers, they may only want like E grades, which is the top, the top of the tree carcass wise. So they have to obviously get a grade against it so they know that they're supplying what butcher with what, what grade of carcass. And then like cover on stock. I mean, I'd say it more happens with the lambs as opposed to the cats where folk folk bring them in. I mean, it's all been well being fought to kilos, but if it's not, if it's not got cover, it's not fat, you know. Yeah. I mean. You have to look at the weight as well, if, so they don't get too heavy. But you need you need them to have a good a good cover. But, uh, nothing beats a, a good feel of the back. Uh, to, to know how yeah. to do. Or the tail, a back the tail, or the back tail, of the tail. Absolutely. You know, I mean, you can you can soon feel how fat they're getting by but just giving the tail a wee a wee squeeze. And going on about carcasses and sort of going back back to breeds. I know you've as we say you've got to think about your farm farming system first, but. But push yourself to to try out new breeds um, and cr cross different things to try and get something that's still 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 a good carcass. You know something that still does on the farm, but you're still producing a good finished quality. carcass. You know good quality. Yeah. You know. Um, but I mean, it doesn't it doesn't matter what what breed it is, as long as it's right. Yeah, that's it, and it's it's done right. So you um, know we don't know how to do it right, but. You know, we can tell you, what we think. <laughs> uh, but it's it is worth you know thinking about getting into um, where it is crossing, trying different breeds, just pushing yourself to to get the best the best finished product. Well, there's no there's no harm in trying. I mean, no. what's well, nothing ventured, nothing gained as such. Exactly. You know, but I'm not saying go and buy a blue a blue texel top and put your blocky yeah, nose yeah. to it, but. I mean, you could try it. If, if, if all, all in I farming, we'd be doing hill, hill bell texts probably, <laughs> but uh, we'd have it go. Which, I mean, we'd make a fun new for each. Yeah, I would say we've touched some bell on this already. Uh, Growth, time of selling, naturally done. Breeding yeah. stock, the frames. Yeah, well but, covered. Yeah, frames, cattle as well, you know, that comes back to the weight. You know, they might not weigh heavy, but if they're big frames of cattle, you know they can they'll, they'll go on to do, do. Yeah. yeah as long as as long as there's a frame there for, for the finisher to start that is the main you can't get that point across enough yeah. you know i mean that is what you want a frame that's it's another thing we're talking about a, a, a length of a you know looking length and breadth so looking at your cows uh you know you're looking on if you know it's coming from them your bull as well your sire so uh you want good sort of lengthy cattle yeah. um, and try and focus on on growth growth's a huge huge thing uh, you know, it comes down to sort of the weight gain and things as well. But yeah, it's you want something to grow quite often. We're seeing stuff that pushed on, pushed on too, too hard, hard, too hard, too young. Too hard, too young. Um, it's just yeah. not gonna. Yeah. Especially at grass time now, when when the buyers were getting grass fever, you know, I mean, there's yearlings coming in at at four eighty, five hundred kilos. They they just they're yeah. not viable to go to grass. That's right. I mean, they're they're beasts that just have to go in and stay in a shed. But uh, yeah, at twelve months yeah. old, it just. A word the word that we use often is 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 growthless in the you know look at that and you go oh uh, um, well we hopefully don't use it often because we see it often but when we do see it it's uh, you see something that's growthless and that's just the opposite what buyers are looking for they're just looking for something that, what we we said it so many times that go on and do it's it's all about thriving when you're selling a store you know you don't they don't want a finished product they want something that they can take. And it will go and do with them, you know. Uh, so it's, it's growth's a, a huge thing when you're selling, no matter if it's store lambs or cattle. I mean, even 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 when it comes like down to the breeding stock, I mean, like the ewes. I mean, they're just just good long 
good long, like, I mean, if you're hill ground, good long, wacky yows. You know what I mean? They can soon spit out a good, yeah, a good oh, Texel absolutely. lamb or, I mean, yeah. even, even Shetland yows. Yeah. I mean, they, they stick a Texel over them and yeah. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know? But uh, I think, yeah, yeah that's right. Right. I think it's a, a good point for us to finish up on is, uh, is growth. Because uh, it's probably the biggest thing, as as for especially for buyers. Uh, I mean, that's the store, and it's it's they want a product that's going to go on, go on and do. They don't want a product that's already already at the stage. So, yeah, um, I think that's I think maybe that's... A, enough of us rambling on. Uh, I don't know if there's. What any... do you think, Cara? Do you, think, do, you, do you want us to ramble for a wee bit more? Or... Are there any questions to be asked? Or... No, you're good. We've got some questions that have come in. Brilliant. Um, so I'll just start with them. Um, so earlier you were talking about the age of lambs and cattle. Um, what would you consider an ideal age for the lambs and cattle to be sold out of the West Coast at store cattle? For the cattle, I would, I would say really eight to 13 months. Yeah. So eight to twelve. Yeah, years. we see the sort of the, the yearling mark. The yearling is, mark. Yeah, is sort of because that time. that gives the next buyer long enough to do do with whatever you know. I mean, they could stick them out to grass. So. Exactly, and, and that's a it's a good stage. Coming back to that growth again, it's a good stage for them for them to change on to something different. You know, it, it might, might the grass might be tired. It's time to go on to maybe or maybe Easter Coast or more central, where it's more maybe younger grass or so. And then it's a time for them to go on and thrive. So yeah, definitely the yearling mark. Uh, we are lambs. Lambs, I would, I would just say really when, especially through the storing, just when they're ready to, yeah. to be spend, you know. Yeah. I would just yeah. that's when that's that's when they're looking the best. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're straight straight off their mothers. Straight off the mothers, definitely. So yeah, it's, it's sort of what your lambing times go, but yeah. Show of the mothers and, and yeah. But I mean, even even the same with the calves as well. I mean, I was the folk that just pull them straight off the mothers the morning of the sale. Yeah. You know, I mean, it saves them taking a check and then they have to keep them away for a couple of weeks before mm -hmm. they can sell them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I, it seems to be the way that it's. I think, yeah, well, I think the suckle calves is at the back end is definitely a big, big thing we'll see more and more of. I think it's definitely the way the way to go. Uh, just straight, to straight off the mothers. Sell the store because, yeah. Your, your your profits to be made on you know you know bringing the, the life on on to there you know it's about that you you should focus on the the, the suckler stage of being born stage in the lambs it's all about bringing it onto the planet and then that's for your part and then you pass it on to someone else to go on and to start fattening it you know yeah and um, just for the new for people who are new to agriculture how long so they have them as the suckler cattle or lambs until weeding, say, and then they sell them on. How long are they actually spending with the finisher before they go to slaughter, roughly? It, de it, it depends, depends, obviously, but... It's, it's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a difficult question, Cara. Something <laughs> heck. But, I mean, it's... On the whole, what we... Would, a, would, a very stereotypical, a very stereotypical, and there's so many different ways... If you were selling suckle calves, they would probably get taken through the winter, grazed again through the summer, and then would you say push, pushed on at that back in there? If, if I had to put an age on it, I would say roughly 20 to 24 months. Yeah, so they'd, they'd probably get taken to you a winter, grazed again, and then pushed on once they go back in, in for that winter. It's, it's a common way for sort of the West Coast. But it's, there's it's, obviously obviously beasts that do take longer and there's beasts that take shorter. I mean, like, like Nick touched on earlier, I mean, these, these bigger yearlings that have been pushed right through. I mean, they'll, they'll be away at 14, 15 months. You know I mean? If they keep on going at that, that rate. But I mean, it's obviously the 30 months is there for a reason. So ideally, yeah, before then, but I mean, oh, we all, we all get, but I say we all get them, but yeah. I mean, there's all beasts that just don't, don't do. Don't yeah. do. yeah, it's always mm -hmm. going to happen. Th 30 months is like the cap. It, it's rare we're seeing, seeing stock. Close to 30 months, it's usually not much longer after 24, 25, 24 five, yeah. yeah. So I would say, so I'd, I'd really say another year on top of when when's the best time is for them to sell yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, another question that's come in. Uh, you talked about prime and store 
uh, stock cattle or lambs. Can you just explain the difference between prime and stock, just for so, people so who maybe haven't been in? Prime, prime is finished stock. So like your, your prime cattle, your prime lambs, and then store is obviously like like the yearlings as such. I mean, you, you wouldn't get a yearling going through through the fat ring. I mean, that would be that's yeah. the store. The, the prime a, a prime sale is the finished product. So you get sold the finished product. So at a prime sale, it's not farmers buying, it's uh, butchers, butchers and suppliers. Things. So they're buying to go straight into the food chain. Where a store sale, it's farmers buying to, to put on to, to their farm to then to take the next stage of life to get it to the finished product. So yeah, the prime sale is the finished product, the store sales the, the sort of handing over in between as such. It can be an yeah. emotional day. It can be a very emotional day, that's right. <laughs> so would you say that people coming out of the west coast of Scotland are more focusing towards the store? Yeah. Yeah. Sales. So, is a the call the good old saying is uh, breed in the east and finish the sorry breed in the west and finish in the east. Uh, so that's that that's what I definitely stand by. That in the west of Scotland, it's all about the breeding uh, and the, the, the producing the product, and then hand it over to the boys that have all, all the barley and show in the world, and they'll they'll take it to the finishing point. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, that you, you can finish in the west if you want, but I mean, it'd obviously be more of an expense than so what the boys in the East have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, yeah. I don't think I would advise it right enough, but I mean, it's, 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 it's not, it's you've, not got to you've got it's to not try, you've all. got to try everything. And that's, and it depends your stock number as well. It's more than achievable to, to, to finish lands in the West as well. Yeah. You know, it's very more than achievable. So, but as, as a whole, it's a store. Store is probably the biggest way in, in the West Coast of Scotland, definitely. Yeah, brilliant. Right, we've got a question that's come in. Do you believe there is a premium for store lambs which have received a vaccination like Heptivac? Do buyers trust the seller that it has been done correctly? What do you guys think? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say there's a premium. To be honest with you, no. It's, no. Uh, I would say yeah. hey, the buyers. The buyers would trust if it was announced, but uh, a lot of the buyers like to do it themselves for the peace of mind knowing that it's done yeah so, so i don't I, they uh, yeah it's 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 they're buying the product in front of them i, I don't think it's, it's at the forefront of their mind don't get me wrong i do think it's worth doing uh almost as a reputation name for yourself they know that it's which have been done with you but I, as i say all, all i said it's not a thing to get I wouldn't caught up on too much. It's no. just not a not a huge premium. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it if they weren't done. Yeah. But I mean it's because oh, it's the same same as cattle as well. I mean, even if they are dosed, I mean the buyers like to probably you no know, take them in and give, give them, them their treatment as well. Yeah. So yeah. It's, yeah. it's their peace of mind at such yeah. one, especially especially with the prices that they've been paying, you know. I mean, it's a nice Definitely. ones in, in the back end at 80, 90 pounds. I mean, it's yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of money. <laughs> you're not going to take that. So yeah, yeah, as you say, it's quite often the buyers are like to do it for their peace of mind. Yeah. All right. All right. Another question that's come in: um, online bidding throughout the pandemic has become very common. Do you think this has been a positive for the industry, and do you think it will continue to be a platform for buyers in the future? For livestock. No. Yeah, all, all in I, well, actually, as, as a market ourselves, are, are, are just quite anti is harsh, but we're quite against the idea of, of buying stock online. You just, you can't, you can't get a judge of, of an animal uh, through, through a photo, I don't think. I mean, I've got a, there's a guy, there's a customer down, the, the, down in sort of, he was the East Coast, but yeah, he, he bought an Angus bull and he was, he'd only seen photos of it online and goes, an absolute top of a bull and he was looking forward to putting it to his heifers uh, and, it, and it came off the lorry and, and he thought it was a Dexter, it was so small, you know, and it, it wasn't big enough to, to actually bull his heifers. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, a lot, especially with the technology of you can make something look nice, you know, you make something, something look tremendous. very fancy you know, in a you photo. Can, you can sell anything from a photo or a video. You can't, you can't hide, you can't hide anything when you're looking at a, a base in real life, you know. As as it is. I had a customer who was dealing with uh, a diff another market with the online bidding for store cattle and his father every week would go to the market and they'd buy a wee pickle of stores 
anyway, so the grass fever had kicked in. They were they were desperate for cattle. Obviously, with COVID, the uh, the father, I mean, as soon as he ate his, he didn't want to go to the market. So they set him up. They set him up on the computer to bid. Anyway, the Arctic arrived, and it was a son I was speaking to. He, oh, he said he nearly started crying when he saw what came off. You know, I mean, not not no. the, not the type of stock they would buy whatsoever. But because it's online, it mm-hmm. looks. Yeah, it looks fine. Yeah, no. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know I'm going off topic here, but for yeah. the machinery, for machinery side online, yeah, that is something that's good. But that's something that's good, but not livestock. Yeah, livestock. Well, not you know, we've got to see it. We'd say, but yeah, which I know it's a tough of the pandemic, and people have got to do what they've got to do through the pandemic. So it's obviously happened, and you've just got to just take it as it is. But definitely, as things will come in the future, it's not something we'll be keen for. No, 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 no. Um, and have you found that the pandemic's affected your buyers coming or your sellers coming to the market? I would have said when it first, when obviously the pandemic first kicked in and there was no over 70s allowed at the market, that was that was a big, big factor, especially on the, the, prime, the prime stock, the prime cattle day, because I mean, most of the buyers, they, 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 they're over 70, you know, so I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's no hiding there. There, there's no hiding you know so i mean that, that that kicked out a lot of them so they were having to find different folks coming in to buy the stock for them and we i actually think it could change the the sort of um, trend of sellers you know um we're, sellers. We're, sell, we're sellers not coming through the pandemic uh they're just it's, everybody's been dropping off and going and, they, and they're realizing that i've got another whole whole day at home i can actually achieve a lot more uh <laughs> Uh, and not seeing it sold, so I think it's something that we'll now start to see a, a lot less of as sellers staying to see their stock sold. Don't get me wrong, I think, uh, especially if you're putting away big lot store cattle or store lambs, uh, I, think it's, I, I think you should stay there to see it, to, it personally, in my opinion. Personally, if I, well, if I was a farmer and selling stock, I would, I would want to see them sold. I want to see them sold. You know, I, I mean, it's... It's like, uh, I don't know how you describe it. Yeah, well, it's you, good, you've it's good yeah. to the bank and see the paycheck. Yeah, I think, yeah, you you, know you've, I mean, worked, you've worked all the, that time to, to create the product, I think, you as well, to see it sold and, and stand there and be proud. But, um, yeah, but then again, if you're if you're someone who's just doing, working to do fat lambs, for example, and you're dropping off just, you know, a dozen or 20 or so every week, yeah. you know, you can't lose a day of your week every week to, to, to the market, even though our, our bacon rolls are unbeatable. So. And our putter is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> what, what more could one want? <laughs> okay. Um, what would your top tip be to a new entrant who's like started, just started, who's maybe not been to a market for the first time? Come what would your top tips be? <laughs> Come to the Cali. Re- re- reach, uh, reach out, reach out to reach out to the auctioneer that's what we that's what all the market is about the market is all about us having a relationship with with our our um, customers uh, and consigners so it's we're all about good relationships come out ask us to come out we'll come out and see you we'll give you a bit of advice when we think it's the best time for you to sell it and, and, and look after you it's it's an absolute partnership from that that point of view it's Get, just phone up your auctioneer, explain your situation, say this is what you've got, you don't know when to sell it, and we'll have a chat through what you've got and work out a plan. And that's that's what we pride ourselves on, especially as... as that's, what, that's what the buzz is. That's where yeah, we get... Yeah. That's, where, uh, that's, that's what, where we get our hits. Yeah, that's, that's what you we know? do. Is we, we, have, we build up relationships with folk and, and, and they are to look after. And it's, it's, we'll, try, we'll try our best to advise you. To be honest, quite, quite often it's uh, if they're having problems with their their husband or wife, uh, you give us a phone. You know, it's not just <laughs> it's not just stock. It ends up being uh, you just give us a phone. Even if it's just for the phone for the chat. What's happening in the market this week? What's going on? You know, and we'll phone them just to see. Look, we haven't heard from you in a wee while. How are you how's getting things? on? Yeah, yeah just how you happening? getting on. Look after yourself, sort of thing. So yeah, it's. Um, it's all about building up a relationship with auctioneer, yeah. I'd say. You know. No, well, in the market, yeah, and the buyers, and all, the buyers, obviously. Exactly. You so, know, yeah. I mean, even the main relationship. I know we only briefly touched on it, but well, we smiled when we said it. But I mean, when you when you sell your stock and you go to give your luck penny to the buyer, that is, yeah, that's building a bridge. Yeah, exactly. And and buyers speaking for sellers. 
they understand what's what's happening, where it's come from, and uh, if the more the, the buyer knows about the seller and how how they've done them, the better job the buyer the buyer can do. Yeah, yeah. No, so, definitely. Yeah. But I know no. It's all about any, relationships. Yeah. Any new entrants, just you can give them our numbers, Carol. Just go <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, if anyone else has any questions, just remember you can pop them in the chat. And um, I will pick them up and can ask them to Ollie and Nick. Um, I'm just thinking, is there anything else? Um, right, you've done your top tips. I've run out of questions myself now. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to think of one for you. Like what? What are the main breeds that you see coming out of the West Coast? That's probably a good question for new entrants who maybe haven't bought their cattle yet. What kind of the main breeds that you're seeing coming out of the West Coast? To be honest, the, there are a lot of limits, especially especially like down down in Campbellton. I mean, the dairy farmers they they put limit bull over them, but there there's I would I would really say limit and Angus. Yeah. To be to be entirely honest with you, that's. Mm -hmm. That'd be the two main breeds, and obviously, yeah, obviously, black and, black and whites as well. But maybe not. But that's a, as a product seller, you probably they're probably not the cows. You know, the the, the cows will tend to be. Oh, right, the cows. Sorry, the, the, cow, the cows would be more sort of like uh, native native bred cattle. Usually, what we're seeing in the West Coast. Well, obviously, for, for some people, not the, the dairy point of view. Uh, you know, short on crosses, yeah. highland crosses, and, and these things. A lot, a lot of people like the high. Put, have the Highland cow and put a short horn over it for the yeah, purpose, exactly. and then they put the limmy to the short That's horn. That's it. Once you've got a yeah a good crossbred native bred cow that can do on your on your ground, you can then find uh, maybe a continental bull or something like that that you can then you know a Charlie's got a big one for the suckling calves. Yeah, yeah. using a, and then a con you get a good sort of native bred cow and then use a use a continental uh, bull over the top and and you get a cracking product from our point of view yeah no definitely okay and then got, it oh, sorry sorry no i've got a question coming i'm just waiting on it to come to me oh here we are um are there many women producers at the moment who sell with you absolutely yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a yeah. uh, definitely a big thing it's we got plenty of people even from the buyer's front and the seller's yeah. front yeah there is there's plenty of women and it's starting to see more as well um, especially young younger generation taking on the generation above them that there is I would I would actually say this since since the start of COVID I would say there's been a lot more women kicking yeah. around the market and buying and selling De definitely as Nick says like the next generation down from from the father or the yeah, father as I say is the generation above us have definitely been a bad for it there's definitely a lack of women women in the generation above us but uh our sort of generation, we're seeing a, a lot more women getting involved and, and taking a, a good good share of the business. And yeah, we're, we're, we're seeing women on a far more regular basis, which obviously we're very keen for. Yeah, nice. And I would say as someone who goes to the market myself um, as a woman as well, go there and speak to different farmers and speak to the auctioneers. Like, it is really a, a lovely community when you are there. Um, obviously pre-COVID, but it is definitely Absolutely. a good it's, place to yeah. have a catch up and meet people. It's, and it's a social hub, you know. It really is a social hub. You know, you get there, and you get your, your good. You can walk in knowing nobody and walk out knowing yeah. everybody. Yeah, that's that's, a, that's a market. It's a very well, and the the guys that we see here, the the regular sort of um, people we see here every week, they they love it when they see a new face in the market because. The board of David's chat, they're sat and to had it, they've had it for the last 40 years. The board of his chat, they've all seen someone new to come in to go and, have a chat and, and it's exciting for them as well. They like seeing new entrants, you know, we do, buyers do, all our sort of regulars do, but like they like seeing new entrants and new people coming in. So, yeah, it's don't be afraid to, to go into the market and just say hello to anyone you see. I mean, even if, even if you're just passing and popping for, for yeah, food, you exactly. know, yeah. now, now the canteen's back open. After COVID, well, not after COVID, but now you can sit in and eat. But I mean, hey, just pop in yeah. any time, any time. Yeah. Preferably a sale day, right enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we've kind of touched on this question, but it, I think you can probably expand on it. Um, do you think COVID has had a negative aspect on selling 
of livestock with the interaction of between people being heavily restricted or do you think it's not really impacted it i would actually say it was data uh, yeah i would actually say the livestock the livestock on a whole has since COVID, well i think obviously covid's had an impact on it as well but i mean throughout the folk although there has been less people uh, here stock itself has been there i'd say as I, I say this every week pretty much is industries go with this whole pandemic we've been by far the best industry to come out of it i think we're uh, we're seeing a, a sort of a bigger attitude for people buying local uh people are definitely having a conscious of where they're buying from and taking more interest of, of where the produce is coming from from that point of view and i, I get your point about the social interaction it's definitely it's hard for the sellers and buyers to not have that interaction between each other, not seeing each other at, at the market. Uh, but we've just been fortunate that it's actually come out in our favour that there's still that sort of um, yeah that trade there for them. Yeah, no, we're lucky. Yeah, yeah very lucky. All right, I think um, this will be our last question because that's us now. We're nearly at half. Well, we're after half eight. So the last question is. Blackies are slowly decreasing and shearwits are on the increase. Why do you think that might be? Are you meaning, is it, is it someone, sheep. is it, sheep. I, is, is that someone asked the question who's obviously? Yes. Yeah. yes. Is, it, is it meaning store lambs or yows? Uh, I think he'll be meaning store lambs. I know who it is. <laughs> I would, I would say probably because shearwits are, quicker to finish to sell than blackies. I mean, blackies can take a, take a while to get to get the, the good cover on them for the finished product. But I mean, even, even for stores, though, I mean, a, a chivia, if you, even if you're just giving it a wee bite to eat, you can soon make a chivia look better on a sale day than a blackie. It's, uh, and this is what comes back to all in I have no qualifications or right to comment on it, but there are folk are saying, you know, the, the blackie is a different breed than for what it used to be. It's maybe not as hardy as it's it was. A softer, it's a softer it's, breed. It's, it's definitely getting a softer breed. Just from what we gather from talking to farmers, they find that blackies are, are a softer breed. Uh, and also, and the thing that's going to see more and more is we're talking about, especially new entrants, new people coming in, and you, you get you know old farmers that. I've had blackies on this hill all my life. My grandfather had blackies on this hill my whole life. And his father had blackies on the hill his whole life. Where you can't just do that. You need to spice things spice up. Spice things up, exactly. Come in with fresh eyes, go and take something, go somewhere and learn something and try something new. So I think that's what we're starting to see more folk move away from blackies yeah. is, is, is trying something different, you know, which we're all keen for. You know, keep pushing and pushing your business to to find something, but something I mean, that works. But I mean, Blackie Hills, I mean, they are... Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong. Can't, can't go wrong you, can't, the, 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 you know what you're getting. You yeah. can put them to a hill and forget about them for yeah, exactly. 10 months. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's the type of sheep they are. Not exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, if there's a way off the hill, we'll soon find it. That's it. But we'll, we'll see it We'll see it go around uh, in circles. And it's the same with the cattle as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there goes through trends where everyone's got native bred cattle. Uh, and then it goes to trends where everyone wants to have nice, shapey continental cattle. It's just, it will go in loops. It's, it's, that's what I would say, really. So, yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. That was a brilliant talk. Um, and I hope it was very interesting to all the new entrants and new starts to agriculture. Um, it gave a really nice overview of from start to finish, really, um, and what buyers are actually looking for when they are buying the stock. Um, so I would just like to remind everyone that this is part of a seven series of webinars over the next seven um, Thursdays. So we were the first one tonight. The next one is next Thursday on the 24th of June, and that's looking at alternative livestock. So if you're interested in that, go along to the FAS website and you'll be able to book onto that. Okay. Um, thank you very much.